Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Beginning tonight with that breaking news on the coronavirus outbreak, Governor Gretchen Whitmer declaring a state of emergency in Michigan after announcing there are now the two first confirmed cases of the virus in our state. The governor says one patient is from Wayne County, the other from Oakland County. One patient traveled domestically, the other internationally. Governor says it is one man and one woman, both in the hospital, both middle aged. Governor made that announcement just a few minutes ago from Lansing. We're taking every step that we can to mitigate the virus spread and keep Michiganders safe. I've signed an executive order declaring a state of emergency in order to maximize our efforts and assist local governments and officials to slow the spread. And joining us now is our medical expert, Dr. Frank McGeorge, and you've been staying on top of this. What do you yeah. take from uh, the press conference tonight? Well, you know, I think it's interesting that one of the patients was international travel. That should come as no surprise sure. because of the rate that it has been spreading globally. The fact that it, the other one was a domestic travel case is interesting because, of course, we know that the case counts within the United States have been growing. Now, depending on how long that individual was um, in, or either of those individuals were in our community, potentially symptomatic or marginally symptomatic, there would still be a risk of them spreading it locally. Now, of course, health officials are going to be all over looking at their contact tracing, anybody that they could have been in contact with. And I think that's going to be the most important thing that's going to develop in the next few days is identifying who might be at risk just based on those potential exposures. If my count is correct, there are now just 13 states that don't have a coronavirus case as we were one exactly. of 14 and no, now no longer. So that not a surprise. We, we no. knew this day was coming. What does it mean to, to create an emergency, those footing for the state? Well, so, you know, the governor, of course, acted Activated the emergency operations center but you know the idea that she has actually activated emergency protocols gives her certain um, I guess powers if you will mm -hmm. to um, institute certain let's say quarantine was necessary or let's say school shutdowns were necessary all of that is going to have to be determined in the next couple of days depending on how this progresses and depending on the contact tracing so for example it's totally conceivable that if one of these individuals was somebody that it was exposed at a large level to a university campus for example that university campus may have a higher risk of exposure and they may need to change protocols so that's I think the the important thing about her declaring a state of emergency, yeah. but it also allows her a more flexibility in terms of decision making, task force p strength, and um, and resources as well. Sure, indeed. Okay, we'll have more from you coming up on the news at 4:30. Yes, starting on local four news today. All right. If you're just joining us, we also need to get you caught up on uh, not only that, the tonight's breaking news from the governor here. There are, as we said, two confirmed cases now in Michigan: Oakland County, one in Wayne County. We've learned one of the patients is a middle-aged woman. The other, a middle-aged man. That's really all they're telling us uh, in terms of that. One of the cases is from domestic travel. The other from international travel. We will continue following updates and bring you the latest information on the air and on clickondetroit.com. Indeed, such a busy news night because our other big story this evening, of course, primary night. Former Vice President Joe Biden with a big win over Senator Bernie Sanders in the Democratic primary here in Michigan. Uh, Vice President Biden continuing his Super Tuesday momentum of a week ago and now increasing his delegate lead over Sanders. We have team coverage tonight. Steve Gargiola has been covering the long lines in Ann Arbor. We begin, though, with Mar McDonald. She's live at the Biden campaign watch party tonight. And Mar, what a big night for the former vice president. A huge night, Kimberly. You know, the Sanders campaign rolled in here last Friday. They threw absolutely everything they had at this primary, and it simply wasn't to be. Former Vice President Joe Biden addressing the crowds from Philadelphia just moments ago. Take a listen. All those who have been knocked down, all those who have been counted out, left behind, this is your campaign. Biden had little to no campaign structure in Michigan versus Sanders' well-oiled campaign machine here. But tonight, none of that mattered. Perceived electability going forward to the fall handed Joe Biden an overwhelming victory in a state Sanders won four years ago. At least here in Michigan, you know, the voters here, and at least the Democrats know that Michigan, that Joe Biden's been a fighter for them for the last eight years. And, you know, I think he's being rewarded for that tonight. But 2020 is a different dynamic than 2016. Biden does not polarize voters the way Hillary Clinton did here. People like him and trust him with power. He's had experience in governing. He has wisdom. He's helped autos. When we had auto rescue, uh, Bernie Sanders actually voted against it. 
drove a Subaru to the polls a week ago, by the way. Uh, anyway, the bottom line is that Joe is much more, he has much broader appeal. Back here live, Senator Sanders is in Vermont tonight. Per his campaign, he will not be making any comments. And Devin Kimberly, when the dust settles tomorrow morning and the numbers are all in, here's what we need to be looking at. How much bigger was the Democratic Party or Democratic primary turnout than 2016? And I think that will tell the tale of what we can expect here in Michigan going into the fall and how big of a fight it's going to be. We're live in Eastern Market tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Yep. Back to you. Sure. Okay, Mara, thank you. Let's now check in with Steve Garagiola. He's live outside the TCF Center where votes are still being counted. And Steve, earlier you were in Ann Arbor where Michigan's new same-day registration law led to some very long lines. Boy, that is the truth. You know, to me, Election Day is very exciting. This is how democracy works. Today, 13,000 Michiganders took advantage of the program to register and vote on the same day, on Election Day. And I met a lot of those folks in Ann Arbor tonight. People can get in, with their forms filled out, get their absentee vote. Uh, free lunch pizza? Free pizza? It's part pizza party and part democracy party. Hundreds of young voters here first to register and then to vote. Exciting for first timers. You see your parents do it growing up and you don't really understand it. And then you think you do in high school, but being here is a whole different experience. Anybody feeling cold? Anybody blankets? Anybody? Why do they feel it's important to be out here? Other countries don't have the right to go out and have their say in who they think should be leading their country. So the fact that we get to do that, we can't take that for granted. The other why question is why did you wait until the last hour of the last day? As most college students, you know, procrastinating to the last minute is a little bit in our blood. <laughs> Inside City Hall, more than 100 people already in line ahead of them. They have brought proof of residency and patience. We've been in line for almost like three hours. I came here right after my exam. It's a widely held belief that young people won't put in the effort to get out and vote. We've heard it for sure, but I mean, all these people here today are, I'm assuming, are here to prove that it's not true at all and that we're here to, you know, talk our talk and walk our walk. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Was it worth the wait? Yeah, it was 100%. worth the wait, yeah. For sure. You know, I tell you the truth, it was actually a little bit inspiring for me. As darkness fell, they huddled in blankets and they waited their turn to have their voice heard. Now in November, we all get a chance to do that again. Reporting live, I'm Steve Garagiola, Local 4. Really fascinating to watch that today. All right, Steve. Uh, Joe Biden starting to push ahead of the delegate count following tonight's big win in Michigan because there were also victories in Mississippi and Missouri. It was an M kind of night. Taking a look at the latest numbers, the former vice president ahead now by 135 delegates. We are still waiting on the final votes from three other states this evening, North Dakota, Washington, and Idaho. On the Republican side, no surprise at all, President Trump sweeping the GOP primaries, including winning here in Michigan. Now, voters across uh, Wayne, Oakland, and Macomb counties were also deciding on whether or not to renew the 10-year Detroit Institute of Arts, the DIA millage. Here is where the vote stands right now in Wayne County with 77% uh, of the votes, yes. Uh, we moved to Oakland County. DIA millage passed there easily way back in uh, 2012, and you can see it's leading uh, by a strong margin here. And uh, here is a look at the vote in Macomb County where the DIA millage just barely passed eight years ago, and I can't, per the percentage of... I believe it's just 33%, still not a ton of the Macomb County vote in, but right now, uh, the yeses have it, yeah. So we'll keep watching on that. Two Metro Detroit communities decide, uh, deciding this primary whether to allow marijuana facilities into their communities. Uh, let's start in Clinton Township. A ballot proposal to allow up to 24 marijuana-based businesses has been very controversial there and uh, too close to call at this hour. 50, oh, it's just jumped there. For, uh, that was, no, it didn't. 51% uh, looking back to... Uh, uh, Clinton Township, because the graphic you're seeing now moves us to e-course. Voters there approving to allow recreational marijuana facilities in the city. City Council had opted out of pot sales last year, so tonight's vote overturns that decision. We will continue to bring you the updated election results throughout the newscast. You'll watch those on the bottom of the screen, and updates are continually coming in right now on clickondetroit.com. You'll find the link on the homepage.
All right, a busy, busy, busy news day. Let's uh, get you caught up now on your forecast. Last night we were talking about our warmest day yeah. of the year. Now we got snow moving what in. What's the deal here, Ben? Well, we've got the blue on the other side of the lake, and yes, that does signify snow. That's on its way here, and it does look like it's going to have some impact on the morning commute. Expect rain and snow showers through the lunch hour. We'll talk about how much to expect and how long that's going to last. Coming up. Okay, Ben, and a father is held at gunpoint inside his own home with his eight children in the house. What police are saying about the intruders and why they targeted the family. Priya. A random attack at a Romulus gas station leaves a woman with brutal injuries. I was unconscious on the floor for I don't know how long he was still beating me and kicking me in my face. He said he was going to kill her tonight. How this woman barely escaped. All right, Priya, and a reminder, if you're just joining us, we are now under a state of emergency in Michigan. Governor Whitmer announcing two coronavirus cases, and they're both here in Metro Detroit. One in Wayne County, one in Oakland County. We know both victims, a middle-aged man and woman, are in the hospital and both recently traveled, one domestic and one international. Dr. Frank McGeorge will be gathering new information and watching developments overnight. He'll join us for the latest on Local 4 News Today. It's four o'clock and we're here. But our coverage is everywhere. And no matter the weather, bringing you special moments from across the metro area. And trending stories you'll want to share. We're live from Detroit.